Good morning. All right, so we're going to be uh, creating some projects using uh, Microbit today. And so what I, I would like you to do is head over to the makecode.microbit.org website, and then we'll start creating. So welcome to this session. I'm excited to be uh, supporting you and your learning. And again, if you have any uh, additional questions, please, please feel free to reach out and I'll try to support you as, as best as I can. So again, makecode.microbit.org. So once you're there, you should have a website that will look like this. So with that website, um, you'll see that there are um, your projects are being stored right here. And so this goes into the cache or the memory of your web browser. And then just below here, you'll see there's a whole bunch of uh, tutorials and those sort of things um, that you can explore at your leisure. And so what we're going to do is we're going to jump right into a new project. So you're going to click on a new project. And then this one we're going to call heads or tails. So it's nice to have a, a good name for our project so that we can uh, find them later and be able to follow along. So we'll see here that we have uh, sort of three parts to our or three main parts to our uh, website here. So here we've got uh, a virtual or a simulated micro bit. Uh, if we had a micro bit, this would be helpful for us to, to sort of test things out in the web before we wanted to download it onto the virtual uh, to the physical micro bit. Then in the middle here, we have what are called our um, scripts or code or our drawers that you can find the different code uh, in there. And we'll explore a few of those throughout our lesson today. And then the last part over here on the right hand side is where we will drop our code. And so you see that we start off with on start and forever. And so if we need those, they're great. Um, but if we don't need them, we can just drag them over and drop them here in the middle. That will just get rid of them. So what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be making a heads or tails, so essentially like a coin flipper um, in there. And so what we want to do first is first, what is a coin flipper? Um, so if we just think about uh, we have a, a physical coin, we're going to flip it. And then so if I just make a little comment here, so we're going to have a coin and then we're going to flip it somehow. And so that will need some sort of input uh, if we're going to sh shake, if we're going to press a button, those sort of things. And we'll talk about that in a second. And then we want to display H or T, essentially, um, to be heads or tails. All right, so that's sort of the, the, the idea for our particular program that we're going to have. So let's go ahead and sort of code this uh, program. So we're going to start off with a coin. So we need a way of like storing or, or having that coin. And so we use what are called variables for that. And so a variable is uh, a container that we can store different things in. So here we're going to be storing the value of the coin in here. And so we're going to, we can start off at the very beginning of the program. We can start off with the coin is equal to zero. We can do that. But we sort of want this way of like flipping it or, or a, you know, a virtual flip. So we're, while we're not going to take our micro bit and we're going to throw it in the air and catch it. Well, maybe we could if we had actually had a, a micro bit. Um, but for our virtual setting here, we're not going to be flipping it. And so there's a few different options we can use from an input, uh, a sort of import. And so we can go to our import category. And so we have, I really like these two options here. So one is on button A pressed. And so that you can see here is button A and button B. And so we can explore A or B. The next option um, and so if I click on that, we can have A or B here. 
Another option that I like is this on shake. And so we would actually just shake the micro bit. And so we can either use our mouse to sort of wiggle, wiggle, wiggle back and forth, or we can just use that physical shake or the, the button here to sort of shake it. And so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to leave that on shake. I'm going to get rid of this um, on button A pressed. And so actually what we want is um, to have the on shake, we're going to set that coin. And so we're going to we're going to set the coin to a certain value and then we'll display heads or tails. And so what I'm going to go ahead and do and I'm going to move this down here. And I'm going to get rid of this on start. And so on shake, we're going to set coin to right now we're setting it to zero, but we actually need to um, display either heads or tails. And so really that gives us two options. So we've got two options here um, for this, which means that we need a way of sort of randomly picking between heads or tails. So there's a key word that I just said there, random. And so random would be found in our math category. So I'm going to go into our math category and then we're going to head down to pick random. So when we have this random here, it will allow us, in this case, to go from 0 to 10. Now, if we want it from any number to any number, we can just change those numbers here. You also see that it's sort of like hashed out here. So a little bit gray and some hash, uh, some cross hatches here. So what that means is it's not uh, going to work right now because it's not connected to anything. So if anything is is nicely uh, solid in its color, it's because it will run um, because it's the, the, the logic of the code um, or the, at least the, the syntax is is good. And so that means that the the blocks are where they are should be to create something. And so I'm just going to grab this and you'll see that there's a little um, this zero here where it is is like a little bit of an oval. And then this pick random block is also an oval. And so when I put that inside of that, you'll see that it goes in very nicely. And so here we can say set coin, pick random, 0 to 10. Well, we don't want it to be 10 because we really only have two options. And so here I can say 0 or 1. So depending if it's 0 or 1, and then we can display something. All right, so now we've got our two options. And I'm just going to add on here, so 0 or one. So now I can say that, you know, if it's zero, then we can maybe say that it will be H or heads. And then if one, we can say that it's tails. All right. So there's a key thing that I just introduced here is called an if statement or if so it's asking questions. And in coding, we call those conditionals. And that's found in our logic category. And so in the logic category, we go in here and we have our conditionals. And so we want this if statement. So there's actually a couple if options here. So we have if true, then this. And then this is if true, then that, or that. So for example, today, uh, it's very cold outside, so if the temperature is lower than um, 20 degrees or minus 20 degrees, then you want to make sure that you're all bundled up. Else, then you don't have to worry, you'll just wear a t-shirt outside. But we know that if it's you know below zero, we can start to think about things. If it's below 10 degrees, below 20 degrees. So we can start to have all these different opportunities with our uh, if statements or with our conditionals. And we can add in some of these comparisons. So if it's equal to or less than or greater than. So we're, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna show that to you now. So if, we'll just drag that right in there. And you'll see how it sort of snaps in. 
uh, as we're as we're creating these this code and then we want a conditional so now we're saying that if zero so now it's not going to be zero because this coin is actually going to take a value for us all right and so it's going to be a value of either zero or one and so here we want to have we're going to gra drag this and you'll see where the little little point is is where it will land and so we want to sort of represent what we've done here so if zero or if the coin is equal to zero then we want the output to be h and so i i first when i first typed it out i was just trying to quickly take it out but you can see here how we're now getting a little bit more more um programming so if the coin is equal to zero we want to display an h and so i'm going to go ahead into basic and i can just show leds oh i need to zoom out just a little bit so i can see my blocks so i don't want it in here i want it inside this right here and so drag that and there we go so i'm going to do display an h so you can see how you can just click on those and they start to create things and then the other option is if coin is equal to one and so here i can just press the plus and the plus again and then i can do the same thing now the cool thing is if i just take this and i'm just hovered over here um, just off of coin on this uh, comparison block and I can right click, so I just right clicking on my mouse, I go duplicate, and I can have that same piece of code. So coin is equal to one, so I'm just changing that on my keyboard. And now I can do a T. And then we're gonna test this out. So I'm gonna do a nice big T. There we are. So now we can test this out. So we start off and we shake it. Now we have an H. So I shake it again. There's a T. So I keep shaking it and you can see as I shake it more and more, uh, we'll get an, you know, a varying if it's heads or tails and, and so that back and forth. So that's our first little activity for today. Um, I just wanted to show this to you quickly. Um, it's a nice way of getting started with, with exploring with some conditionals. You might be wondering about this else at the bottom here. We don't, we don't need it. Um, so I can just press this minus and it will delete it out of there. And so this is our um, finished code for our heads and tails uh, coin flipper activity. So to save this, uh, right away, this is saved within your um, web browser, in your cache. But what I like to do and what I recommend um, you to do is to click this little save option as well. And that will download it onto your computer. And so you can save that um, for future use if you wanted to. All right. So that's a quick little demonstration. I am going to link to another video after this um, so that you can keep exploring. All right. Thanks very much for watching and happy coding. Bye for now.